How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I present to you my little collection of DC Animated Universe figures. I've never made a video about them, and that's because I didn't have them. My wife recently took to eBay and purchased me a whole lot of these. We got these guys for a song when you compare how much they tend to go for individually and how much they went for in the stores when they were first released. Oh, and I also picked up Robin as well to round the video out. So we're gonna open up him today and we're gonna have a look at all these figures, the good, the bad, the nitty, and the gritty. We're gonna go over them all with a fine tooth comb as quickly as we possibly can because there's a lot of them and this video could take a really long time. So for starters, I guess I'll begin with Batman and Robin. Let's quickly look at the box art and then depackage Damien. All these figures came on a white card back with some artwork in there behind the figure and then your simple solid color and white down here. In this case is DC Universe animated movie Son of Batman figure number eight. And the back always showed other figures that you could get in the series. In this case, Nightwing and Deathstroke I don't yet have, but believe me, the completionist in me says, you will, oh yes, you will. And then of course, each one on the one side of the package had an image of their animated counterpart with some more written stuffity stuff. And now we peel. And we pull. Here's a quick look at the artwork that came on the inside of the card. Here's a quick look at the bubble. No one cares! And here's Damien, and here is Batman. I had originally passed on these figures because they looked kind of cheap. And also I couldn't afford them, I was tapped out and I had to kind of pick a few different lines I was gonna buy. And these just weren't on the top of the list. But they're actually nicer than I had originally given them credit for. Although I also passed on them, for example, this Robin, because I was afraid that this Robin was going to be really delicate and, and just snap on me. Because we all know that DC Collectibles has a bad, bad track record with having broken limbs. But this guy actually seems pretty good quality, actually. Pretty tight as far as the joints go. I'm not going to push this guy's joints, though. I just really don't want anything to snap. One thing about these figures that I really also didn't like about them is their lack of ankle articulation. When you have figures that have capes, having them stand up can be tricky when there's no ankle articulation. Although, one thing that makes up for it is how awesome this little katana accessory is. This katana looks really, really good. And it fits in his hand just like that perfectly. The paint job on this Robin Looks pretty good, actually. I don't see a lot of overage pretty much anywhere. He looks really good. And the facial sculpt for this Robin matches his animated counterpart, Bang On. I really, really like that a lot. And I'm kind of kicking myself for waiting so long to get this figure. And the same could be said for Batman. Starting with his face sculpt, actually, you can really see that that looks very much like he does in the DC animated features. Very little in the way of sculpted detail on this guy. As for the rest of them, all the lines are painted on. And again, that's something that turned me off from these guys at one point, was the fact that when you have very little in the way of sculpted detail, you have more opportunity, I feel, for sloppy paint because there's no lines to catch it. This actually doesn't look bad at all. I love the way his cape sort of hangs over his shoulders like that. That looks absolutely fantastic. And the paint apps for the most part, face, body, and everywhere are pretty neat. But because he has absolutely no articulation whatsoever in the ankles and nothing as far as rotation up here, no waist, no abs, just like the rest of the figures, getting him to stand up can be just a little bit of a pain. There, now he's up. All right, I've moved Batman and Damien to this back corner and we're gonna bring in Aquaman next. And he's the only figure I have from the Throne of Atlantis movie. I'll probably end up getting the rest of them, but so far, it's just Aquaman. And as far as figures of Arthur go, this is actually not terrible at all. The color scheme is so simple and so basic, 
but it actually looks really good. And the painted details on him aren't altogether terrible. Like, they're, they're really not. They could have been neater, I suppose, but look at all the gold lines around his waist here. Like, they did a pretty good job of, of making sure that wasn't sloppy. And then as far as his wrist bracers go, yeah, I can't really complain at all about the paint apps on this guy. He's actually pretty neat. And as far as his face goes, yeah, that looks really good. They actually got the eyes right, too. When you mess up a figure's eyes, it totally takes away from the figure itself. And this guy's on a completely different buck than Batman. Although it's probably about as slender as Batman's body buck, the Aquaman body, as well as you'll see the Green Lantern and the Flash, are definitely more chiseled, at least in the abs department. Let's push Aquaman up here off to the side and start bringing in Justice League war figures, starting with Flash. Now it's hard to say whether this Flash's figure's paint was quite as sloppy when it was first opened because I did get this used off of eBay. But it's DC collectibles, so it's really hard to tell whether that's a paint scuff or a factory defect that made its way into the package. I'm left questioning and wondering because this is the first figure that we're looking at up close where the paint lines are less than perfect in some places. As in, they're kind of fuzzy around the wrists. They're definitely a little bit lackluster on his torso down here. And as for his face, He's all kinds of cross-eyed. Like, this eye is looking at you correctly, but that one, not so much. Yeah, wow, this one really is kind of worse for wear. You can really see that either a kid's played with it, or possibly it's fallen off the shelf a couple times, or maybe a cat knocked it off. I love cats, but they're jerks, and they prove the world isn't flat because they would have knocked everything off by now. But yeah, that's the Flash. We'll stick him here. And I'll introduce Hal Jordan. Now, Hal is a figure, you'll have to excuse the fact that he's clearly seen some damage from the previous owners. Possibly, like I said, a kid playing with it, or falling off a shelf, or something like that. But in general, this is not a terrible Hal Jordan figure. True, the paint apps, just like with the Flash, can be kind of sloppy coming from the factory, and that always sucks. Pay no attention to the scuffs from this thing probably being played with and chucked across a linoleum kitchen floor by a kid. Anyhow, yeah, not a bad figure at all. And as far as his face sculpt goes, I am 100% satisfied with how this guy looks in comparison to his animated counterpart. Either way, definitely very happy with him. I'm gonna balance him in the back and bring out Cyborg. Oh gee, yep, this is one that is definitely challenging to stand up. I'm just gonna start with that. I'm gonna lead off with that. Not with how cool of a figure he is or anything like that, but he's challenging to stand up. And that is because, if you look at him, this is how I've kind of got to lean him forward. His feet and then his calves actually angle back this way a little bit. And, you know, having that ankle articulation on all these figures, and I'm not even an articulation snob, would have been something that was really, really beneficial for these guys. But we got him standing, so let's have a look at him. Out of all of the animated figures that I have, Cyborg is definitely the one with the most unique to the character, sculpted detail all the way around. He's got a completely unique torso, legs, knees, feet, arms. This guy, I don't think he shares anything with anyone, because even the lines right here on his biceps, that's actually sculpted. And of course, he's got his own head, so this figure here, they definitely put, I think, the most work into crafting his overall appearance. And they would have to. They can't get away with giving him anyone else's body. As for the paint apps on him, they're not that terrible. I mean, there's some overage spray right here on him. This is actually probably just a scuff on his emblem from the previous owner. The same thing with his face. Like, you can't look at this scuff right here and not realize that that's from actual child play or falling off a shelf or something like that. Not a terrible figure, one bit, definitely one that out of all of them, I like the best. Let's stick him over here behind the Batman and then take out the Wizards champion, Billy Batson, Shazam! That's right, we have 
what I like to call Captain Marvel. I'm never going to get used to calling this guy anything but Captain Marvel because historically that is his name. Why can't we all just get along and call both characters Captain Marvel? And yes, I just spent a couple seconds there, more than I wanted to, just trying to get him to stand up on account of the fact that his ankles, the same as all the rest of these guys, kind of sucks because there's nothing there, there's no joint, there's no way to rebalance him from the ankles. All the balancing has to be done from the knees and from the groin, and they've all got these heavy rubber capes, so when I try to stand him up, he falls down every single time. Mm. Anywho, the figure itself, the look of this is actually not bad at all. The cape, if you're going to go with a rubber Shazam cape, this is actually one of the better ones that DC Collectibles puts out. It's really, really nice. Got the hood, this big hood behind his head, and the paint apps for, say, the lightning bolt on his chest. They could be crisper, but they also could be a lot worse. And his belt, too. There's not a lot of slop or overage. It is really tidy for a figure that has no sculpted lines at all for the paint to follow. The wrist paint on his cuffs here could be a little bit thicker. It is a little bit thin and kind of hazy. And the same thing for the boots, but at least the gold lines that, that signify the end of his boots are nice and clear. And the color palette looks good. And his face sculpt, as far as the DC animated characters goes, it's actually pretty good. It looks better in person, definitely, than it does online. I'll absolutely give it that. And he's on a bigger buck in comparison to the three lads over here on this side. Actually, Green Lantern and Flash have the same buck as each other, but Aquaman has his own. I actually thought that it was the same, but it's not. I've looked closer, and I'm a dummy. They're completely different. I'm just gonna stand him here. Please don't fall over and take Cyborg with you. And bring out Wonder Woman, Diana of Themyscira, Princess of the Amazons. I'm so in the middle with this figure of do I like it or don't I? I'll start with what I like about her right off the bat, that being her face sculpt and the paint as well. She looks really quite nice, and actually perhaps better than all of them except for Batman and Robin, does the best job of capturing the overall look of her animated counterpart. Where I run into problems with Diana is that her body proportions are just weird. Like that's weird, right? Like I'm not seeing stuff here, like that, that's weird. Look at the size of those legs, and then that little tiny body and teensy waist, and then that little weensy head. I just, I don't know, I like her, I do. I just think that her body proportions are strange. The other thing about this figure that I find off-putting is the fact that although this arm is clearly the right forearm that's been attached to the right upper arm, and you can use the articulation, you can bend the elbow as need be, with this side it's not so good because Look, the elbow's on the front, and there ain't nothing you can do to change that other than buy a new figure and just deal with the odd lack of articulation, weird elbow in the front. This is DC Universe Classics kind of mess-ups from the factory, but somehow it made its way onto the shipping container and to this country in a package, and it should have never left the factory floor. She does come with a sword, though, which is kind of cool, and it has to count for something. And then finally, as for the paint apps for Wonder Woman... Well, you can see for yourself, this is definitely one of the ones that is not quite as impressive as some of the others. Like, all up in here, that's a that's a mess. The blue line is kind of hazy, you got a black with the silver popping out behind it, and you can see here what it's actually supposed to look like, and this is what we got on this side. The scuff up here, I wouldn't count that as something that was from the package. That was likely from the previous owner of the figure. Other than that, I mean, it it's not terrible. I mean, definitely you've got lines that could be crisper. Overall, not a terrible figure, just not one of my favorite in the series. And, oh, now we have a fire sale. They've all fallen over! Stand there, Hal. Don't, don't move. See, this is the problem with the articulation on these guys. It just, it's very unforgiving when they decide that they're going to fall over. And then we have Superman from the Justice League War movie. I've saved him for last because Superman's my favorite character. And even though he's my favorite character, he's actually the figure that in many ways I'm the least satisfied with. The overall quality of Superman's paint apps really actually aren't that great. The paint lines on the boots definitely could be a little bit clearer, as the same thing with the lines under his knees and his arms where it connects just at the inside of his elbow there. Again, like a lot of the other paint, it's kind of sloppy. 
And as for his belt, his mid area with the chevron belt buckle symbol here, you can definitely see that there's a layer of paint underneath, which is the belt band, and then they painted the chevron up top, and the paint just wasn't thick enough, and it really just doesn't look that great. His chest emblem does look good, I will give them that. They managed to get the look of this right, and it looks neat and tidy. And as for the face, come on, it doesn't really look like he does in the animated features. I mean, I suppose it would if the eyes weren't painted quite the way they were, they'd have a better chance at looking really like it does in the animated features. But in general, this is just really not a good Superman figure overall, at least in comparison to many of the other figures from the animated line. The completionist in me is happy to have him, while the perfectionist in me is totally crying on the inside that my favorite character was done in many ways kinda poorly. Anyway, Super Friends, that is the end of the video. You guys have seen all there is to see. These guys are old, old, old. I'm late to the game with this video, so this obviously isn't going to be a regular action figure review. There's no comparisons. I'm not doing an articulation segment. You can see what they can and can't do just by looking at them. Overall, for consistency, I would definitely give this line a solid 9. As for the quality, I'd probably give them about a 6.5. And for playability, if you're going to give these to your kids, I'd say I'd give them about a zero. Don't give these to your kids. But that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, found it useful or an interesting waste of time for the day at least. And if you did, please take the time to leave a like on the video. Leave any comments you have down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my DC Comics related content, show up in your YouTube inbox that I invite you today to become a super friend and join us here at the DC Squad. How do you do that? Well, you know what I'm going to ask next. You just hit the subscribe button and possibly ding the notification bell if you you'd like to, and I will see you in the next one. Have a very DC day, everybody, and take care.